Hello, I'm Chris Menard. Today in Microsoft Excel, I'm going to analyze um, paychecks and not just paychecks, show you how to come up with the end of the date uh, for every month. A little tricky, so here's my example of why I'm doing this. If I got paid every week and I want to analyze my paycheck, and let's say the first day that I got paid this year, I'm making the year 2020, and the first Friday I got paid was the third and I get paid weekly. Well, that's pretty easy. Just take that and add seven to it. There's your formula and just pull it down. And then I could have a column for gross pay, FICA, federal taxes, all that stuff going across the top and analyzing it. If I got paid every two weeks, again, still easy. Just make it 14 in the formula bar and pull down. The issue is I get paid on the 15th of every month and I get paid the last day of every month. What I didn't want to do and I actually started doing is coming here and going 2-15-2020 and then I'm actually, the 28th is wrong, it's the 29th and then you got to keep going and you can make a lot of mistakes. Plus, in this example I'm just doing paychecks but what if it's some other date and there's hundreds or even thousands of them? So in this video, I'm going to cover five Excel functions you should know, and they're all date related. So let's start off really simple because these will all end up in the same function at some point. I have a list of customers and I didn't put any of the customers, but assume that there's customers. I have their invoice date. Well, I can sit here and sort by customer or I can sort by invoice date. But what if I want to sort by just the day or the month? Not going to be able to do it. So three Excel functions you should know, and all three of these have one argument. The first one is the year function. It will pull the year out of a date. So I should get 2020 here. Just so you know, if that was 2021, I would get 2021. So there's the year function, one argument. Next to that one, I'm going to do the month function. Very similar, one argument. That should give me the number six because it's June in that invoice date right there. And I get that. And then finally, the day function returns the day. I get the seventh. There's the year. There's the month. There's the day. Highlight all three of them. Crosshairs, double click. I can now go and sort by whatever I want to. So those are three easy functions that are date functions. My next example over in K, I put in today's date, which is April 12th, 2020. Control uh, semicolon will put in the current date, by the way. I want to know what is the end of the month for April. I know it's the 30th, but I don't want to sit there and type it. I'm going to use the equals MO month function. It has two arguments. So the first three functions we did had one argument. This one has two. I'm looking for that date, comma, how many months do you want to count? If I want to stay in the current month, I put a zero, which means it should return April 30th. If I wanted to look one month out, I would put in the number one, and it would give me May. I'll test that in one second. There is April 30th. There is your equals MO month function. Let's change it. I want to know for May, I should get 31. And I do. Two months from now would be June back to 30. Good. EOM. So there's four functions we've already learned in less than four minutes. Year, month, day. There's control semicolon to get the current date in also. All right. Here comes the tough one. I did have to type in my first mid-month pay period, which is the 15th. So I always get paid on the 15th, and I always get paid the last day of the month. So I'm going to do two functions. I'm going to use, we haven't used this one yet, the date function. Equals date, it has three arguments, year, month, and day. Well, I want to know what year it is. And I'm going to pick cell B2, which should return 2020, just like it did over here. Close it, comma. Now I'm going to do the month. I'm looking for that month. I'm not done with the month, but I'm going to continue on until, and then I'm going to come back and edit this formula, this function. 
Because you know right now with the month, I'm going to get January again when I'm actually looking for the next month. Comma, what day are you looking for? That one's always the 15th. I get paid on the 15th. So I should get exactly the same thing in cell B4, which I'm in right now, as cell B2. Uh, we found a typo. I'm not sure what typo. Uh, yes, hit yes. I do. I get the exact same date. So here's the trick. You can see the formula in the formula bar, but I'm just going to double click. You know I want the next month, so inside that month function, B2 plus 1. That adds a month to it. There is 2, 15, 20, 20. One more bit of advice here. Again, I know the day is always the 15th. I can put the 15th in here, and I'm again get the right answer. Please try not to do that. I'll tell you why, because what if I'm making this up? What if someone says, no, we're going to get paid on the 18th of every month? This thing is still looking at the 15th of every month. So I'm better off back the way I initially had it right there. Day B2. That one was okay. That was the date function and it had the year in it, the month, and the day. The tricky one is right now. So this one's good. And just to show you this, there's your formula text function. So you can see how this looks. I'll leave that up there so you can see it. The end of the month is the tricky one because I'm still going to go with date. I'm still going to use year. But this time I'm looking in cell B3 for the year. I'm still going to get 2020. Comma. The month will still work the way it did just above it. B3 plus 1 will give me the next month. Comma. I need the end of the month. I need the last day of the month, which is not the 28th because this is a leap year. It was the 29th. So I don't want to sit here and type them. So inside of the day function, I'm going to do the end of the month function. B3. Remember, two arguments, comma, zero, which means I'm still looking inside the current month. This answer will be incorrect. I'm going to go ahead and show you this, though. I got 3, 2, 20, 20. I'm expecting to get 2, 29, 20, 20. Because what you need to do here, and we just discussed this right when we started, is when you're using the end of the month function, I'm looking for the next month. So, I'm not looking for January, so I'm going to add a 1 right here. I should get 2, 29, 20, 20. Perfect. I'm going to use formula text. I'll just autofill it. So, there are your two. There they are right there. Looks complicated, but once I've showed you, walked you through this on how to do it, um, you're good. So, now that's 1, 2, 3... Year, month, day, end of month was number four. Now the date function, that's five date functions in Excel you've already learned in under nine minutes. These two are great. Watch this. I need to highlight them both. I need to make sure this works. Don't highlight just one in autofill. You got to do them both. Crosshairs for autofill. I'm going to just pull it down twice. And you got to pull them down in pairs. So I should get 315 and 3. 31. Perfect. Pull down. Uh, I'm going to pull down. If I go too far, I can always come back and delete. True? Sounds good to me. Yep. There's December 15th, December 31st, January 15th, 2021, 228, because it's not a leap year, obviously. Get rid of them. There you go. That is how you take care of um, payroll dates where you get paid twice a month. But it's not just for payroll dates. I have had to use that end of month function a lot for accounting exercises, for uh,
payroll that's been earned but not paid yet. That is the end of the month function. Anyway, feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Tomorrow, which is Monday, April 13th, I'm going to show you in Microsoft Teams a new feature called Tags. So I can send, I can message or do a conversation with the team. I can do a conversation with my channel and I can at mention individual people, but I need to group people together. For example, if you're a hospital, I might take all the physicians and tag them as physicians. I might take all the nurses and make those nurses. All the medical techs may be medical techs. So I can quickly send out messages to just groups at one time instead of having to type 40 people's names and at mention them. And then on Tuesday, which will be April 14th, I'm going to show you, because I keep getting asked for this, in Microsoft, I'm sorry, in Zoom meetings, what would I do if I was an educator? How would I schedule a meeting to protect that meeting? I'm going to tell you a couple tips I guarantee you no one's ever said before. But I'm going to show you how to schedule a meeting, whether you're K-12, college or university, how I would schedule a Zoom meeting for my students. Thank you for your time. Have a great Sunday. Bye-bye.